Hello and welcome everybody. Today we will be talking about uh, the introduction to congruence and triangles uh, for our geometry class. So this is the beginning of chapter five. So here is basically an introduction of uh, what does it mean to have congruence and triangle. So far as of now, we've talked about congruence in sides uh, or uh, segments. And uh, we've talked about also congruence in uh, angle. Uh, basically, both of them, uh, if two things are congruent to each other, uh, to each other, then that means that their measurements are going to be equal to each other. So the question now is, what does it mean for a triangle to be congruent to each other? Well, before we get into that, I need to introduce something just to uh, you know get you guys to understand what does it mean. Uh, you know, just to uh, I, I guess kind of to help us transition into that idea. So the first thing I want to introduce is a map, uh, a concept called mapping. So uh, what that means is that uh, let's say that we have the following right here. Uh, we have A maps to D, and let me go ahead and kind of circle that, and then B maps to D, and then C maps to D, uh, F right here. So you can kind of think of it as like, say, uh, one point is translated into another point somewhere else, and then another point is translated somewhere uh, to another point somewhere else and so forth. So here, let me just kind of draw like an example. Uh, let's say that we have a triangle over here. Uh, we'll go ahead and call it A, B, and C. Uh, and then we have another triangle over here. Uh, then that triangle, let me just go ahead and uh, draw something, right? So D, E, and F, for example. So what that means is that point A is going to map onto point D. So that's what uh, A uh, maps to D and D maps to A means. Uh, whereas point B maps to uh, point E. So that means that this point can interchange to this point over here and back and forth. And then finally, point C is going to map to point F over here. So that is going to be the last part over here. So that's C mapped to F and vice versa. And this one is going to be B uh, maps to E and vice versa. Now, uh, note that the two triangles are not the same thing uh, and they are in no way related to each other. Uh, and it could be just, you know, in, um, it, it could be just like any three points mapping to any other three points. Now, when it comes to congruent triangles, this mapping thing is very specific though. Uh, we want to make sure that when we map it, uh, all of the characteristics are going to be the same. So that is to say, uh, when we map for congruence and triangle, AB the length has to be the same thing as DE the length. BC the length has to be the same thing as EF the length. And AC the length has to be the same thing as DF the length. And in addition to the segments being the same thing, uh, we need to make sure that the angles are also going to be the same. That is to say, angle B is the same as E, angle A is the same as D, and angle C is the same as F. So here you can, uh, I can draw kind of like a definition of what does it mean for two triangles to be congruent according to mapping then. So by definition, if two triangles are congruent to each other, uh, written in this form right here, ABC triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF, then like I said, all the following characteristics have to be the same. The sides have to be congruent to each other. Uh, the angles are have to be congruent to each other. Uh, you can also write it so that the lengths are uh, measurement wise is equal to each other too. And also the measurement of the angles are equal to each other too. So all of those uh, 12 different variations would fall into the definition of congruent triangles. Now, in this case, uh, in terms of how mapping works, you can see how mapping is still going to be applied over here. Uh, when I say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF, you can see how A is still going to map to D over here, right? Because those two are going to be uh, the same vertex of the same angle. Uh, B, in this case, is going to map to E over here uh, because those two are the same in terms of the angle. And then C maps to F over here in terms of that angle. So one can possibly say that ABC is going to map onto, uh, in this case, uh, DEF in this case. Okay, but that's not the part that I really care about. What I really care about are these congruent parts or these equal parts, uh, because that's what we're going to be looking at uh, for this chapter. 
Um, so, you know, thinking about like the converse of the statement, right? Because this is technically a definition. So that means that uh, if you say that the two triangles are congruent to each other, then all of its corresponding parts, meaning all of these six characteristics are the same thing, uh, are going to be congruent to each other. Uh, does that mean that the other way around is the same thing? So that is to say, um, if I know all six of these characteristics, uh, does that mean that the triangle is congruent to uh, each other? And the answer is yes, because by definition, they have to be the same. But I don't really want to prove all six of these to be the same to show that the two triangles are congruent to each other. So the question is, is there a way to minimize how many things I need to show to be congruent in order for two triangles to be congruent? And that's what this chapter is about. Do I need to show all three angles are congruent to each other and three all three sides are congruent to each other to show that the two triangles are congruent to each other? The answer is no. We're going to go ahead and try to discover some easier method to figure out how that actually works out in the near future. All right. So that's basically the question right there. And thank you so much for